Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is July 26th and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see the Pacific Northwest off to the right of the screen here under the influence here of some onshore flow. We got some thunderstorms rolling around here. This is going to be building across some of the Pacific Northwest as we go through the upcoming week. We'll take a look at the extended forecast as always as we go through the video here this morning. Look at the cinnamon bun though off the south shore of Alaska over the Gulf of Alaska now pretty interesting stuff just a little bit of a hint of what's going to be going on as we go through the fall and the winter months no doubt now taking a look here at this morning across some of washington you can see if i stop this right near the end of the run you can see we've got some of that marine layer in here and socked in across a lot of western washington eastern washington eastern oregon doing better with some sunny conditions out there we go down towards the portland metro and the willamette valley actually some low clouds in there this morning as well oregon coast fairly well socked in you might be getting a little bit of a peak of sunshine out there for some of the central coast uh, if you take a very close look at that right towards the end of the run there it goes so anyway if we take a look down across some of southern oregon there you can also see some of that marine layer moving around as well and you can see this mid-level moisture that's going to be bringing in another round of thunderstorms here across portions of oregon today and over the next couple of days but then that's going to be moving northwards towards washington as well so check it out here this is a uh, for june 2025 they even mentioned here on the the uh, climate anomaly and events of june 2025 that uh, northern california and washington oregon a lot of places received absolutely no measurable precipitation for the entire month so we actually made the list there and if we take a look at the june 2025 statewide temperature ranks map so if this was the warmest june ever it would be ranked 131 if it was the coldest it would be number one so you can see very warm june wrapped up here for Washington State even warmer on the record books for Oregon very warm still here for portions of Idaho and Montana as well now if we take a look at the precipitation look at Washington number three driest all time for the month of June for the state and again if it was the record driest it would be number one but if it was the wettest it would be 131 so again very dry for Oregon Idaho and even for Montana also in California look at that coming in number 11th all time so anyway back to the maps here taking a look at the uh, thunderstorm uh, over the last 24 hours uh, you can see we got some lightning strikes especially across northern california but those made their way up into southern and southeast oregon into portions of idaho yesterday kind of a reoccurring theme here over the next couple of days coming up as well and if we take a look at that high resolution rapid refresh we're scrolling through here and you'll see it start to pop up there across idaho southwest montana portions of eastern oregon as those thunderstorms move up across idaho there as well and then we go on in towards sunday and you'll see that redevelopment there some of the southern oregon cascades right on the border there maybe towards the i-5 corridor the siskiyous as well and as we go through the evening hours uh, tomorrow you can see some of that moving towards the east slopes of the cascades of oregon and then this is going to be making its way a bit further north here over the next few days more on that here in a moment isolated dry thunderstorms uh, across portions of oregon idaho for today and that goes on in through tomorrow for portions of eastern Oregon and Idaho as well. And kind of an interesting look at things here with the excessive rainfall outlook for overlapping some of the similar areas here. And they do mention that is because some of the burn scar areas and still some of those individual showers could be dropping some heavier rainfall amounts. And some of the fuels are very receptive to fire. So hopefully these uh, lightning strikes that we've been getting here of California and portions of Oregon aren't kicking up fires that we're going to, have to be dealing with in the upcoming weeks. So looking at Spokane National Weather Service, check it out. You can see the warming trend coming up here. Look at Lewiston, Idaho. We're looking at 95, 95 by Thursday and Friday. OMAC warming things up a bit. You can see Pullman going back up to the mid 80s by the time we go towards Thursday. Look at Spokane, some mid and upper 80s showing up there. But, you know, nothing too excessively hot overall. One inch, you hit 92 by the 24th. And if we look off across some of southwest Montana and Idaho, we have Missoula, Montana. Nice graphic here. They talk about the thunderstorms this weekend. Dangerous lightning watch out for that could get some heavier rain of course and you got to know where you are know where you're camping and this goes for the entire pacific northwest know if you're in a lower line elevation area know if there's a burn scar area around you and just because it's not raining on top of your head doesn't mean you can't be subject to flash flooding you can see the cumulus clouds off in the distance just know your overall weather setup it just may save your life gusty winds also 
Now, Boise, Idaho does have this red flag warning for some locations. It doesn't include Boise itself, but you can see if you look across some of southeast Oregon, it is there, and it does talk about the gusty erratic winds accompanying some of these thunderstorms with abundant lightning here, and of course, those fires could spread rapidly. So now, looking at the European Artificial Intelligence on the left versus the GFS, the Global Forecast System, the USA model here on the right, 500 millibars, 18,000 feet, great indicator of general ridge and trough position. We'll scroll through here, and you can see they're locked in on the Gulf of Alaska low, really getting established here as we go through next week, which is also going to bring some southerly fluent flow aloft as we go on in through next week. So this is going to introduce some thunderstorms all the way up through the Washington Cascades as well. And then you go off into the future here, and are we going to have any ridges or troughs? Let's see, we got the trough going all the way through the weekend and towards next week. So no big heat dome in the immediate future. But then look at the GFS starts to say, hey, I want to build this ridge as we go through the 10 plus time day period and it really gets established there as we go on into the first week of August. Don't discount that just yet because I would be surprised at some point in the summer that we don't get a pretty dominant ridge here building at least for some portion of the summer months. But the artificial intelligence definitely has that Gulf of Alaska trough and that system out here much closer and this ridge not nearly as amplified as what the GFS is showing. So something interesting there in the extended forecast. As I continue on towards the end of the run there, again, you can see the differences between the model runs. Now, according to the European Ensemble Mean, I'll put this into motion, troughing dominating our weather. Gulf of Alaska trough gets established. And also this, I'll mention this as well, because as we go through the mid portion of the week, that's what's bringing the bit of a warm up. You see that ridge axis uh, coming up all the way towards British Columbia from the center portion of the country. That's gonna, what's going to warm us up, even for places west of the Cascades. We are going to warm up a little bit as we go through this week. So we scroll off into the extended forecast. What does this have in store for us? Well, it keeps the troughing going all the way on into the early portion of next week, but then it also starts to show something similar to what the GFS was showing, and it starts to build a little bit of a ridge here, but it's still a bit, you still got these westerlies going on here. It's still a little bit of a flattened ridge, but we will watch for the development there as we go on in towards the first week of August, or, you know, if it's going to bring a trough, we'll probably see that in the next few days as well. So now, taking a look at six-hour precipitation. So, again, as we go through the day today you can see that redevelopment here across some of southern oregon back up into idaho and montana across british columbia getting some precipitation as well washington mostly dry as you go through the day today and we go out towards sunday we go back in towards sunday afternoon and again oregon idaho montana kind of the hot spots there for thunderstorm activity but as we go through monday you'll see some of this start to pop up in to actually here we go through monday afternoon again i got ahead of myself here not monday for the washington cascades Let's wait one more day. We'll go to, towards Tuesday here. As we go through Tuesday afternoon, you see some of this start to pop up just to the east of Mount Rainier. Some of the Cascades may start to get some of that lightning activity as well. We go through Wednesday afternoon. You can see it moving up across the Cascades of Washington a little bit further. Here we go on in through Thursday afternoon also. You see some of this precipitation starting to come up the Oregon coast there. we get getting that southerly defluent fall off. We'll watch this period as we go through Thursday, Thursday night into Friday. Is any of that going to be thunderstorms for west of the Cascades? Not showing it too much right now, but you can see some of this precipitation and you can't rule out some lightning activity with that. And again, Washington Cascades starts to pop up there. Blue Angels will be practicing on Thursday. That should be good to go weather-wise, it looks like. And as we go through Friday, though, notice some of these showers coming up across southwest Washington, northwest Oregon. That could have lightning potential with it as well. It's something I'll be watching here over the next few days. And that may bring a few showers in the general area during Seafair on Friday. We go through Saturday morning, a few showers. Can't rule it out as we go through Saturday morning for the Seattle area. By afternoon, it should be fine. Then we go through Sunday. It looks okay, but we do have a system starting to bear down on western Canada. How much precipitation will that bring towards western Washington on the day Monday? Good question here, but it has been showing this frontal system coming through on Monday. That would be August 4th. But again, plenty of time to worry about that it continues some of that rainfall all the way on in through the fifth as well now taking a look at where we are temperatures this is for today seattle 75 looks like some low 80s for the willamette valley medford 92 there's boise bend oregon out there and the tri-cities into the lower 90s we go on in through sunday monday tuesday notice that gradual warming trend as we go towards wednesday seattle 83 southwest bc get away from the water and you warm up quite dramatically you see some 90s returning maybe to the willamette valley again 100 degree plus here for eastern washington by the time you get towards wednesday 
Thursday drop back down just a hair Friday a little bit more and again we're gonna have some of this cloud activity and showers around as we go through the end of next week towards seafair so still in question how the forecast is going to unfold as of right now but just keep checking back on a daily basis and I'll do my best to try to keep us updated on what the latest is and we go on to the extent of forecast who knows what's gonna happen there but you see the warm-up as we go through the early to mid portion of this week for Seattle and then we start to deal with a little bit of the insert here as we get towards Seafair weekend. Portland, something similar, ramping it up towards 90 degrees here on Tuesday and then bringing it back down. What is going to happen after we get a bit of a warm up here? What kind of precipitation? Thunderstorm activity? Question mark, question mark. What is going to go on with that? Spokane, the warm up and then the potential cool down as well as we go into the first portion of August. Something similar for Bend, Oregon also as we go on into the later portion of July and August start to cool things down a little bit there. There's Boise. Look at that upper 90s by Wednesday and 6 to 10 day still has that above normal there as we go through August 4th and then they got this above normal here but take that with a grain of salt we will be watching and breaking that down on a daily basis weather station you've heard me talk about this enough click on the link down below highly recommend this station you are not going to regret purchasing one and it helps support the channel and of course we got the patreon page check it out it's free to join or you can donate some of your hard-earned money there as well as well as on the youtube page but anyway hope you guys are having a good day otherwise click like and subscribe we will do this all again tomorrow and i will talk to you guys then